Welcome to the Green Wasp Removal YouTube channel. In this episode, we remove a very active ground nest filled with eastern yellow jackets or a Vespula macula frons. These are very beneficial native wasps in this ecosystem, but they were not interested in being evicted and they fought back. This season is special because we're training and mentoring a great group of young wasp researchers from the local university. Their wasp survey team is involved in research regarding invasive species and how those are impacting our native beneficial species of wasps here in the local area. They're a great group of highly motivated young wasp hunters. It's been a real pleasure to work with them. So you may see them often on our channel this season because we'll be working closely with the team to get them very well trained and familiar with the species they're going to be dealing with in the field. In this episode, we take the team through their first ground nest removal. They did a great job. We're glad to be able to share this with you now. We'll take you through the entire process. Have fun. Thanks for riding along with us. And underneath this tree is a ground nest of Vespula macula fronds, which is eastern yellow jacket. They typically nest in cavities, usually underground, sometimes in trees, sometimes in buildings, but very often underground, and that is the case here. We're working today with a university team of students who are doing a wasp survey of this area. We are training and mentoring this team, teaching them how to do this type of work in the field so that they can do it for their research project. So that's the job today. You'll be seeing some students and their faculty advisor and me. We're gonna be working together uh, to remove this nest. It should be fun. All right. July 26, 2023, Katie, Trey, Colleen, ready to take out their first ground nest. We're going to remove a ground nest today, which you see here. It's very active. There's a lot of very small workers flying in and out, as you see here. These are Vespula macula fronds, otherwise known as Eastern Yellow Jacket. They're probably gonna get stirred up pretty well here in a moment and start trying to get us. So that's why we have our suits on today. The nest will be probably about the size anywhere from a softball to a volleyball underneath the ground, anywhere down to about 18 inches typically. So we'll see what we get once we get digging. But in the meantime, all we're going to do is we're going to vacuum out the adult foragers. So we have the least number of foragers to deal with when we start the dig. So we're gonna turn on the vac shortly and that's the plan. That looks like it's going to be the right orientation of this device. We should start seeing them. Each one that goes down, make sure you're seeing it come in. Because if too many of them are getting past this, we can adjust the pressure. There's more coming in. They shouldn't be able to climb in this tube going that way. So keep an eye on that too. If they're able to walk out that tube, then the pressure's not high enough. So far, it doesn't look like they're able to do that. Okay, so far, so good. Let's back off a little bit just to get the orientation. And we'll check it out. You'll notice the gear we're using here are specially rigged up vacs that keep the wasps alive when they're brought into the clear container. And this is because they're a beneficial species that we're going to relocate so we don't want to harm them during the removal process. As best we can, we're going to try to keep them alive. The specimen collection containers are also used when the team is out collecting specimens for venom immunotherapy, which is where they can ship the wasps to biomedical labs that will create venom products for people with severe or lethal venom allergies. So venom collection in the field will be a significant part of their project. <music>
as we see coming back to the north in here, uh, when that activity slows down enough, we're going to start stomping around on the ground. stick a scope cam down there just for fun. That'll help probe them out a little bit. Let me grab the scope. Hold it right over the hole for a sec. Okay. Let's see what we get. Okay, there we go. Okay, it's a real slow, real slow, maybe half inch at a time. Trying to look for a hole not there. Okay. There we go, keep going. There's more holes. See the angle down there. See the root system maybe. The roots are what the root system are what the nest is usually supported by. Sometimes. Oh guys, come on out, will you? Here they come. So as we probe with this, we're gonna start seeing more activity. You should start seeing more of them come out. Yeah, see more coming up. Can you see here? Okay. See them, they're marching out. The word is out that there is a threat at the nest site, and they're starting to come out to attack. So you see how they operate. They start spreading the word, spreading the pheromone.
There's a few stinging the camera now. You see how they're attacking it? Okay, so just set those up as you see them. Let's take this guy off. Get him to fly back to the nest. Get him in the junior. Okay, they're still coming right out. Yeah, they're really trying to attack that camera. They're all over when I pull it up. So they're starting to sting and use their defensive reactions. So just be advised they're going to start coming out to get us now, too. But that's helping get the word out that there's issues out here and they need to come investigate. So they are. So they're coming out and attacking the right. You still seeing a lot of activity? Yeah, look at that. They're doing pretty good. Getting a fair number of them in there. All right, so let's start a little dig. And what will happen is here, I'm going to have one of you guys work the back, trying to catch whatever's coming out. And one of you, the two of you guys can dig gently and start putting the dirt into here. Expand the entrance real gently. Okay, you're gonna stay right up on it. Catch anybody who's coming out. So it's slowly putting dirt in. Do you have enough room to work? Yeah, 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 I'm good. How's that? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. So real slow because we want to see where that tunnel goes ideally. You don't have to be too aggressive with it. Just kind of make sure you're hovering over the main space you see them coming from. Okay. And that way they'll find the hole themselves because they just get sucked up in yeah. there. And the suction isn't going to get a lot of dirt. Yeah, that's what we don't want. So keep the dirt away from the mouth of the hose. Yeah, it's a possibility. We'll give it a shot. See what we can see. Oh, I think. And we have a flashlight visible. Got a flashlight. I'll bring it over. I'll bring the IR cam too. Yeah, I think. Hold it, hold it real steady and slowly scan the area back and forth. There you go. Anybody you see starting to crawl around. So anywhere that's lighter in another spot, that's where you want to dig. Pull it back a little bit, maybe two feet, see what you see from directly above. Yeah, keep an eye on exiting and see where they're coming from.
up and see them come up from the bottom too. So keep digging toward that hole where they're coming up at the very bottom. Let's say, let's move a fair amount of earth from here. Okay, we're about, good. About this spot and right, see what you can find. Sometimes you can hear a difference in the depth of the earth. If something sounds a little more hollow, so Colleen, just make sure you're trying to suck up whatever flies near, and uh, try not to get too much debris in there if you can. That's a sting. See how they get stuck in there? And they'll get disemboweled a lot of the time when they try to release themselves in their venom sack and their stinger will get stuck in your gut. Well, yeah, that's stuck in there. I'm not going to mess with it. There you go. Oh. Getting close. So get oh, trowels. Oh, we found the mother load. Yep, get going oh, with the trowels. Not, don't, don't get any dirt in there, please. Hold it back far enough so you're just getting the wasps. That's it. So now we're getting close. Next step's going to be... It's right, it's over yep, here. it's going to be yeah. here. So let's just manage some of these guys first, I think. Mm -hmm. Miles will tell. So keep it right by the hole. Let them all just come out and get sucked up from there. There you go. Come on, keep it right there. Good job, guys. Found it. Now, we're just going to watch as some of these foragers get right into the container. Keep it right there because they're doing great. They're going right down to it. Wow. It just depends. I usually say anywhere from a few inches to 18, give or take. And you see how they... Take a look at this. Well, I guess you are. You're, you're, you're going to try to grab on with your mandibles and with your stingers. So when you see them just flicking away. Okay. Pull back a sec. There's a hole right here. Let them get down near it. And then when they start congregating near it, start sucking them up. Yeah, keep it right down in there. And uh, there. Okay. That's pretty close to where it's going to be. Let us suck up just a few more mm -hmm. first. Because we'd like to have less of a swarm and more of a swarm to prevent stings. That would be very nice. Okay. Hoodies, but the downside of hoodies is you're sweating like crazy, so you gotta hydrate more. Whatever you see them landing on, you just flip them. Hopefully, they'll float back to the hole and get sucked up. Pretty soon. Good, you're getting a lot of them. You get more than you think you do. But I'm seeing a lot of them get sucked up every minute. There you go. Katie, if you see anybody getting landed on, just shoot them away. Okay. All right, do we have visual on the paper? Oh, yeah, yeah, we do. Let me sneak down in there and get a shot of that. Mm -hmm. Let me come over there where you are, Trey, for a sec. Yeah. Ooh, that's a pretty paper, too. Lots of greens and beiges and things, beautiful. It does. Yeah, it looks beautiful. I love wasp paper, it's so beautiful. Oh, it's great, thanks. Carry on, Trey. Be gentle, we want that thing in one piece if we can. So it's deep enough, you can take some of the top layer out with the spade shovel probably, but just be kind of gentle on the depth. 
Uh, yeah, it starts right here back. Nice collection in here. We should have several hundred in this nest easy. It looks like there's several hundred already. Yeah. Let me get the cam set up on the try. I'm going to go get a uh, drop cloth to drop more dirt down. What do you think there, uh, Professor Gray Brown? <laughs> they doing okay? Doing great. All right, good. How you doing, Colleen? Good. All right, Trey, you good? Think so. Okay. Anybody needs a water break or anything? Take it when you need it. Might have a rock there or a root. If you do, here's a root cutter. I think it's a root. Okay, let's pull back a little bit while he digs that rock. And we want to expose that hole again in the paper again. But now we're getting close to the top of the nest, and so you want to just be careful on your depth. You guys have nerves of steel. No panickers. That's good. Trust my equipment. That's it. You got to do your best with your trust in your equipment. That's what I used to say when I was skydiving back around just younger than your age, probably. There. Here we go. Uh -uh. Hope it hits some calm. See all that pupa? Oh wow. In the calm. This is going to be a very active nest. So, Katie, hand me the black. Without getting any dirt in there with it, you can pick up pieces here and start popping them, popping them in with the trowel, preferably. So you don't get stung, stingless. <laughs> Not sure you're going to be able to do much. Yeah. Shake the dirt down. Between your fingers, toss the mask in. Here we go. Got some corn coming out. Oh, look, there's larva. This yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. It's a good pupa and a good larva nest. Okay, here we go. Oh, wow. Right, you see that? Cool. You've got quite a bit of live larva. They're moving in there. Let me get a camera shot real quick. So, we've got a lot of pupa in this nest. 
a lot of live larva, this would have been a very active nest. Gently place that in there and then shake them off your hand because you like to stain it through the glove. Oh, wow. Okay, so we have multiple layers. Look, there's, there's the queen. That's what it looks like in there. Oh, wow. So we've got our queen. Yeah, the queen's quite a bit larger than the others. It looks like she might have been damaged in the dig. Um, but hey, hopefully we can save her and protect the rest of this and allow them to hatch out later. Uh -huh. We knocked a lot of dirt in there. Normally it's, it's perfectly clean. So we, we got a little bit dirty. But look how many pupa. It's going to be a super busy nest. Looks to me like we got most of it. So as you see this dirt, you'll see all the larvae in it. Um, these are the ones that fell out of the that nest. Like wall and you see all the stings on my gloves right now. They're going after my gloves. So if you could knock those off, just give them a little smack. Get them out of there. Thank you. There you go. So these larvae, we cannot save these. I just want to show the camera what this looks like. I'd like to get some of the paper out. So let's start pulling paper. Yeah, it's still a little bit of cavity underneath here. Could be a natural root cavity. Let's get the back down here. Yeah, it's definitely going yeah, back. Yeah, we're definitely digging back further in there. Okay. Let's let some of those forges get sucked up. Yeah, um, some type of brick foundation and stuff. We're gonna leave that there. I don't feel anything nest related, so I think we got that one. Let's refill the hole and go see our Polistes customer. Yeah, flip them around because there'll always be more crawling underneath. Try not to damage the combs too much because we're probably going to try to let those pupate in a captive lab environment. You can pick them right up. The ones that are on the comb are pretty much non-aggressive. They're, they're either brand new and born recently or whatever, but you can grab them and just put them right into the back. Physically put them right in. See any more in there? Yeah. Those are too big. Just get as many of them as you can. And there'll be more coming out of pupation all the time. So over the next few days, there'll be quite a few popping out of the white silk caps. All right, so we are almost out of forages, yes? I think so. So here's our nest. We have one, two, three, four layers. They all appear to be worker combs so far because they're all the same small size. So later in the season, guys, what you'll see is as the nest adds layers, the ones closest to the ground, as you might have seen in the illustrations, are gonna be wider, bigger, deeper cells. And those are gonna be for reproductives, males and queens. But most of these are still worker cells. And they have been getting busy. That's it for part one of this episode. Stay tuned for part two here. We'll show you a preview of what's coming up in part two. We'll show you how we relocate the brood comb into a glass habitat in the lab environment. And then we reintroduce the adults we collected in the field during the removal. And the adults were chilled a little bit to lower their body temperature first, just to make the transfer easier. Then over time they wake up again and get very active on the nest. We then move the habitat outside and we cover it in cardboard to simulate a fairly dark cavity space that this species would typically nest in, like an underground cavity or a tree hollow or maybe inside the wall or an attic. And then we'll do some updates on this relocated nest in a new series as time allows. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned for more adventures with the WASP survey team from Manchester University.
If anyone's interested in helping to fund the operations of this team, we encourage you to send tax-deductible donations. Please contact the Manchester University WASP survey team on their hotline at 260-782-5182. You can leave a detailed voicemail 24-7. <music>